with me. Do we have the lyrics? Yeah. All right. This is a song by David Mallon. Inch by inch and row by row, gonna make this garden grow. All it takes is a rake and a hoe and a piece of fertile ground. Inch by inch, row by row, someone warm these seeds and sow. Someone warm them from below till the rain comes down. Thank you very much for indulging me. <laughs> Music and movement, being a kid, playing, those are all the things we want to be thinking about today as we're thinking about entering the realm of kids zero to five in their childcare settings or in their home settings or in their community. Um, I play that song because it talks about gardening. And I was very fortunate to be able to bring along over 100 copies of this book to distribute free. If you didn't get one, they're out in the lobby. Uh, this was a Wisconsin-produced um, guide to teaching in nature's classroom, which really focuses on um, kids and enjoying the outdoors and connecting to nature and healthy food and physical activity. I'm just going to read a couple quick quotes because there's such sweet things that the, that the kids say. So here's one. These cucumbers from the garden taste better than the ones you get at the store. And the carrots, too. And in terms of physical activity, it says, my hands really hurt from carrying all that water over to the trees. I can't wait to come back to do it again next week. <laughs> um, so my name is Dahi Wolf. You might wonder about that name. Um, my real name is David. Of course, we had Dr. David Satcher here. Um, there are Davids everywhere I go. And so when I went to Ireland to study traditional Irish fiddling back in 1983, Everybody I've met, I'd say, my name's David, and they'd say, oh, Dahi, because in Gaelic or Irish, that's what you say. It rhymes with mahi-mahi, so if you forget how to say it, just think that, mahi-mahi, so thank you. Um, I work at the Wisconsin Council on Children and Families in Madison, Wisconsin. We're a statewide advocacy organization that was founded in 1881, just 18 years after the National Academy of Sciences. We're the oldest family and child advocacy organization in the United States. Um, for the last several years, we have been involved deeply in the issue of equity, which I am very humbled and proud to be uh, speaking of. We released this report, The Race to Equity, in 2013, which focused specifically on Dane County, where Madison is, um, and looked at disparities in employment, health, education, incarceration, et cetera. I know there was a question earlier about whether we should be looking at poverty or race. Obviously, we need to look at both. But as an example, if you take poverty out of the equation, in Dane County in 2013, the poverty rate for white children was 5%. The poverty rate for African American children was 75%, 15 times. We have a lot of work to do. <laughs> but I'm gonna start with some positive things that are happening, and Debbie set me up great to uh, talk a little bit about policy changes. I work with a fantastic group in Wisconsin I'm just one person representing them, so I want to give a shout out to everybody back home. Um, we are called the Wisconsin Early Childhood Obesity Prevention Initiative. It's an annoying acronym. My co-chair's husband likes to call it We Cow Pie. So. <laughs> um, and we use collective impact, uh, which I think is key to all this. You need to work with your partners and collaborate, and it's hard work, and it, and it uh, involves having uh, the features of collective impact, such as a shared agenda and uh, constant communication. And we are also very fortunate in having a group called Health Tide uh, through the um, Wisconsin Partnership Program and the University of Wisconsin-Madison who provide our backbone support. So none of this would have happened without all those uh, places in peace, uh, pla place, pieces in place, sorry. So over the last several years, um, we've created a couple of documents that have been uh, made available to the training of child care providers. Um, the first one is called Active Early. Obviously, it focuses on physical activity. We did a pilot in 20 child care centers throughout Wisconsin and specifically focused on teacher-led physical activity. And the kids wore accelerometers, so they were being tested for their um, moderate, strenuous, and sedentary activity during the day. 
And after the pilot, the amount of moderate to strenuous activity that the kids did in a day tripled because of the intervention of the technical assistance, the materials, the mini grants, the training, all that kind of thing. We know it works, but that was 20 centers. We have 5,000 child care centers in, in Wisconsin, so we need everybody to have this resource and to make it work. Um, and then I uh, want to read a quick quote from uh, one, of the, one of the providers. She says, I'm very proud of my teachers. Being active has become a way of life in our classroom. And I think we talked about the fact that physical activity needs to be integrated throughout the day. One of the places we saw the biggest change was in what we call active transitions. So throughout the childcare day, you're going from one activity to the other, out to, to, to snack, to recess, to uh, quiet time. Every one of those transitions is an opportunity. And so these childcare uh, providers were taught to do things like, oh, we're gonna bunny hop to the next one, or we're gonna march you know, backwards, or we're gonna clap hands, you know, we're gonna sing a song, we're gonna do all these things. And that was part of that tripling of that um, amount of activity. It doesn't have to be that you're going out for an hour and, and running laps. You know, this is, this, that's not physical act, the physical activity we're trying to get. We're trying to have it be there all throughout the day. Um, the second uh, toolkit we created is called Healthy Bites. And of course, that's the nutrition um, side of things. And uh, we're very proud of that one as well. And particularly worked uh, with CACFP and with our Department of Public Instruction in um, piling that all over the state. But I'm gonna talk now about family engagement. We found over the last seven or eight years that we had all these priorities and somehow family engagement was always last and somehow family engagement was always the one we just never got to. We never could make time for or wrap our heads around. But I want to announce that we have made some significant progress um, we have a quality rating system for our child care that started in 2010. It's called Young Star. And as of January 1st this year, 2016, we now have a family engagement point on the 40 point scale that providers um, have the option this year to acquire and by January 1st next year will be a required point. Now we created a menu of wonderful engaging things that you can do with families. And I just want to say I'm using the word family instead of parent because I want to be inclusive of any, any caregivers that the child is having. Um, so on that laundry list, this is the, the key, key takeaway, we were able to get a significant number of health and wellness activities. So around nutrition, around screen time, around uh, gardening, around healthy food. And not only that, but we have a health and wellness point for nutrition and a health and wellness point for physical activity, and we encourage them to double dip. We tell these providers, we are always pounding you and giving you more regulations and more expectations, but here's a chance where you can get double credit. So if you do a family engagement activity that is also involved with health and wellness, you get to count it twice, and that people like. So um, one more thing about the uh, uh, Young Star and the, uh, and the QRIS is that the other thing that we were able to do is to follow the IOM recommendations. We have been pushing for 120 minutes of physical activity in the childcare day. Uh, when we first got the, got the point in the regulations a few years ago, we managed to get 60, so we got halfway there. And by the way, 60 minutes total, half of it teacher-led, half of it free play. So 30 minutes teacher-led, 30 minutes um, free. This year, we asked for 120, we got 90. So we're, we're getting there. So as of uh, January 1st, 90 minutes is now the recommendation. So that's 45 minute teacher led, 45 minute free play. So we're making progress. And one more thing, I just wanna talk about uh, gardening uh, in terms of the positive things. We, there is a demand out there. Their, their providers want to serve better food. They want to have more physical activity. They want to create a, a nutritious environment. So we had a race to the top uh, funded uh, grants to go out to child care centers to do gardening. They were mini grants, maybe $500,000. Um, we had over 300 apply and we could only give 90. So the demand is there. If we had private funders or other sources, I think almost every child care provider in Wisconsin would love to have a garden. Now, this is all the good stuff. I have to give a minute or two to just say it's not all good. 
We've done some really amazing policy changes. Um, we have a great child care system in our state and lots of uh, influence on the regulations. But the fact is, child care wages are dismal. We just had a report in our state that the child, average child care, median child care wage is now $10 an hour. You cannot, <laughs> that's below the poverty line. So, um, and also, of course, the workforce is 98% women, which I think has a factor in that. So if we want to make changes in ch children's lives and they're spending 50 hours a week in child care, we need to fund that and we need to pay for the teachers and we need to pay for the programs because it's totally unreasonable to expect child care providers to care for kids eight or 10 hours a day and then ask them to improve their physical activity and their nutrition and all these other things without compensating them. Also, we get a lot of pushback because child care providers don't want more regulation. And in fact, the child and adult food care, pro uh, child and adult food care program is now, um, for some people, considered burdensome. And we've actually been losing participants right at the same time that for the first time in 40 years, the nutrition guidelines have been updated to actually have some really quality stuff. We didn't get everything we wanted. There's like a 50% whole grain instead of 100% whole grain and other things. And, but you know, it's a fantastic program. We want every child care provider to participate and to use it. But, and, and it's money that you get to, to help your program. But people are saying they're leaving it because they don't want three visits a year. They don't want to fill out the paperwork, et cetera, et cetera. So what do we do about that? And then the last problem I want to just mention is that uh, we are lucky to have just recently received a grant from the Kellogg Foundation to promote farm to ECE in Wisconsin. But there's a lot of barriers, especially in the equity angle. Also, local food is often more expensive. And I think there's a perception that the whole farm to table fresh local food is elitist. It's for hipsters. It's not for me. It's not for my kids. It's not for my program. I just read that Wisconsin is second in the US in the number of organic farms. Yay, yay, yay. But is that food going to low income families in Milwaukee? Not for the most part. So we have work to do. So the last thing is I want to end on a hopeful note and say that we got a lot of work to do, but we're trying. And the thing about equity, which is the, what I want to leave you with, is that it doesn't happen on its own. It doesn't happen if we ignore it. We only can promote equity by being intentional, by being purposeful. We need to disaggregate data whenever we have it. For the first time ever, when I do this Young Star report, which I've done every year for the last five years, I'm going to have two new things in it. I'm going to disaggregate by race and look at the five star level and say, is it disproportional? Are there more white kids in five star and more black kids in the two star? Yes, that's what I found so far. And also health and wellness. I've never looked at that before in this. And, and we're going to look at those points and say, who's getting a point for gardening? Or who's getting a point for um, 90 minutes of physical activity? Um, and then the last thing is that there's a lot of kids that aren't in the system. We can do these great policies. We can have uh, wonderful child care programs. We can train the, the teachers. But there are many kids that are either in unregulated care or in, at, at home or with friends and family. How do we reach those kids? That's our, that's our next challenge. And I'll leave you with that. So. Thank you.